I want people to be able to come and have the operation. Yeah. It is a labor of love for the surgeon. No doubt that a lot of patients, a lot of, a lot of surgeons will say they don't love doing breast reduction surgery, but it is so necessary and it has such an incredible impact on people's well-being, yeah. whether it is physical or mental. That is so, so satisfying. Because mm -hmm. what you typically find is patients, they don't care. They, they, typically, when, you, when you're talking to everybody, the, you know, you may have decreased sensation, you may be not able to breastfeed, you may have issues, they're like, I don't care. That's how I felt. Like, I'm serious. I think you get to a point where you're like, even if they chop everything off, I'll be fine as long as there is no breast. I think, I had, yeah, because for me, it was more of a love hate relationship. There were times where I'd say, okay, this is good because maybe I'll wear certain things and it would actually be nice. But there were some points where it was really a drag when it came to the back pains mm -hmm. and the rush, and especially when it's hot, like you yeah. get like rush. And it's something that you have to deal with when it comes to running. There's always going to be some discomfort unless you're wearing yeah. like a proper bra that's properly supporting you so yeah it, sometimes it does get to the point where you're like i don't care actually just do it i think you also saw like i wasn't as concerned about what is going to happen i just wanted to get it i know <laughs> yeah. i know and that is i would say 95 percent of patients would be exactly the way you are they're like get on with it just chop it off and I, i've had enough of these things they, they are just making my life miserable and so then you do find a few people couple of one or two patients who consider this more cosmetic it's not a cosmetic operation it's the breasts that typically have grown beyond their normal uh, bounds sometimes genetic sometimes sporadic it happens by itself and you you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to give you a semblance of self you're bringing back bring patients back to where they could be have a better self image and yeah you find almost immediately patients are like positively buoyed they're happy they are much better adjusted and even though they're going through dressing changes and things like that it doesn't make a difference yeah don't you agree yeah i actually agree because i was just like happy like i felt lighter that was my first right. yeah i was like everything just feels like i feel so much better yeah. and as i went through even though it was the healing journey it was difficult to like lay on my back because for a couple of weeks i couldn't Right. go on the side yeah, yeah. but everything overall was just worth it like I was at a happier place I was like okay this feels so much better like I've been through a lot of things yeah. now and I can sit on a chair for a lot of hours without actually feeling the sharp pain at the back right and like that's how it like improved my quality of life so and I also wanted to ask like you <coughs> had mentioned like the whole breast reduction surgery is coming with a lift how does that go because oh. sometimes people like are concerned like if there's a lift with the breast reduction and how does so the see, lift yeah so the so what we're doing is in essence we're cutting away breast tissue yeah. all right and we are removing some skin as well so we're removing skin we're removing breast tissue and we are gathering the breast up so most of the times those incisions are made underneath the breast and then we're gathering lifting the areola so in actual fact, with the breast reduction, you get a lift. Mm. But the other way around, with the lift, you don't get a breast reduction. So with the breast lift by itself, there's very little chance of having issues with sensation mm. and issues with breastfeeding. Very little. Almost yeah. nothing. Yeah. With the breast reduction, you are sacrificing ducts. So there is a risk that you're having issues with breastfeeding. Certainly, it's not an insignificant risk. And also, there is a possibility you can have issues with sensation. So, what we're doing is literally redistributing tissue. We're taking tissue away and we are gathering tissue underneath in order to support the breast. That's in essence what we're doing with both the breast lift and the reduction. The reduction, of course, we are removing some of that breast tissue in order to lighten the load. So, um, you know, a lot of patients will say, can I get a breast reduction and a lift? I'm like, you are. In by definition, with the breast reduction, you are getting a lift. So don't worry about that. Part of it is to bring your areolas up to a level that is appropriate for your height and for your folds. And those, that's one of the things that we are measuring. When a, basically, what plastic surgeons do with breast reduction, they're basically tailors. That's what they are. 
They felt like you were tailoring. I know, but that's exactly what we want to do, is we want to try and get it as right as possible. Sometimes you find the areolas, that's one of the other things. Sometimes you find the areolas are not perfectly round. Sometimes they can be a little oval, um, and sometimes they can be quite irregular. Those things can be fixed at a later stage if you wanted them to be. The operation, as I said, is not a cosmetic operation in the true sense of it. We're not dealing with minutia. We're dealing with big, broad brush strokes. We're trying to take away breast tissue and bring everything back to where it needs to be. Yeah. And so you shouldn't think of it as a cosmetic operation. Okay. After the breast reduction surgery, I remember um, there, were, um, there was a time where we had to then start preparing for the surgery. Now you had to ask me about any medication that I was taking right. and then I told you I was taking Omega and yes. whatsoever. There's certain things that I had to avoid and um, I remember reading through the documents that you sent me yes. with regards to smoking and things yes. that to avoid. Like, I guess what I'm trying to ask is... Risk factors. Cool. Yes, the, the, the risk factor of the things that you do <coughs> for the yeah. surgery and preparing, preparing, basically the whole preparation process of the surgery mm. and what is required like after the surgery. Because I remember I had to get like um, the sports bra yes. because I wanted to kind of like support. That's right. So I think people would maybe like to know like what bras are recommended like after surgery and okay. how long does it take until you can wear like a, a normal, normal bra. bra. From a risk factor point of view, when we talk about what medication you're on, some of the things are the over over the counter. So as you mentioned, Omegas, Omegas um, or Omega three specifically is an anti-inflammatory, like turmeric. Bromelian, Arnica, there are a whole host of over-the-counter medications that you have to be aware of because they tend to make you actually bleed a little bit more. Garlic extracts, there's like a list. It literally is probably a hundred, hundred things long. Um, that is vitally important probably for about a week before to stop those type of, of over-the-counter medication. I, I, you know, any normal medication, obviously, have, everything must should be declared. The other thing with regards to smoking is that smoking, whether it's vaping or smoking, is, especially if it's with nicotine, then you always w worry about blood supply. So we tend to say, I say a month before, two weeks after, but some people are more hardcore, they say three months. Some people take it, take it, take a risk and say, don't worry about it. I, I worry about those problems because having issues where wounds don't heal is a problem. Mm. Uh, and you know, you don't want to be having to nurse wounds for more weeks and weeks and weeks afterwards. And so those are the things that we tend to want to talk about. Obviously any medical problems, we've talked about that a little bit, but you know, the over-the-counter medication uh, and then the smoking, those kind of two things are like of vital importance to declare and also to try and Correct. Um, you know, you what you're doing with the smoking, the smoking, the active ingredients will tend to cause the little blood vessels to go into spasm. That's why we don't smoke typically when you have kids, when you're pregnant, yeah. because we don't want to impair the blood supply and oxygenation of the baby. And so, um, so the same thing applies to your breast tissue. We're making cuts. We we are um, we are reducing the blood supply, and so. If you are, have got a background of smoking, you will then risk causing wounds that don't heal. Uh, and that's a problem because it's gonna take months. How does one prepare? You can do certain vitamin E preparations, vitamin A, vitamin E preparations on the skin to try and boost the, the thickness of the skin. So the dermis, which is the, is the strength of the skin, if you can, for months and months and months before, prepare your skin and then afterwards what we tend to do is for the first week I will have dressings on I will will I'll ask you to put a sports bra on something with a nice wide band something that zips or clips in the front it's helpful for me because when you're sleeping I will put that on you so you'll get dressings um, that you leave alone for a week you'll have your bra on. You're gonna leave alone. You're leave alone. Just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, don't get it wet. I remember exactly. every time you text when I ask, like, leave it alone. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But we, we don't want to, we don't want to disturb the waters. Just leave it alone. What tends to happen is if you've stitched everything closed nicely 
and you cover it with a dressing, what tends to happen is there's a little bit of moisture in that dressing that's, that's, that's providing a little bit of moisture to the wound and those wounds heal, heal better. So if you're not taking dressings on, putting in, especially even, even for weeks after, six weeks after, it's usually change it once a week. Don't change it more than that. You don't want to be pulling off dressings and impacting the new new forming skin underneath. So for the first week, I say leave your bra on, leave your whatever uh, dressings are underneath alone. Don't get it wet. You can wash the rest of you. That's completely fine. And try and keep the, the, the chest dry. When you come back at, at one week, I will take all those dressings off, reapply dressings, start you on a cream. That cream is an antibacterial cream, uh, not an antibiotic, but antibacterial cream. And that cream will be using every day after your showers, from the first week onwards, after the first week, sorry. And then I will see you at two weeks, and then we will sort of see where we need to be. And typically, I would see you a, a month later and show you exactly how to do dressing changes and stuff like that. But I agree. I mean, I think that less is more when it comes to dressings. Also, vitally important, if you have a question that pertains to your management, text me, phone me if, if it's something urgent. Don't, you don't pay to come back. Come back as many times as you want. And thank you again for agreeing to do this video. Of course. <laughs> I'm, yes. uh, you, I mean, uh, I think it's, you have seen an area where people need assistance. They need answers. And so mm -hmm. I'm hoping this helps uh, in, in a way that's more meaningful than just writing stuff down. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Now, please do not forget if you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comment section. You can also go to my TikTok, leave the uh, comment there. You can send me DMs. I really try my best to respond to all of the questions that you guys have. And yeah, just leave the question there for me. And then if I have the capacity or the capability to answer you, I'll try to answer you the best way as I can. And if I feel like this might need some medical intervention or somebody who has more knowledge than I do, then I will certainly include it. And then if we can compile as many questions as we can, then we can actually have another episode bringing you information on everything breast reduction, breast augmentation.